What's up guys and welcome to this video. G-Sync, you've probably heard of it, a lot of people were talking about it, it's this big technology that people were saying is the best thing since sliced bread. But what actually is it, what does it do, does it work and is it worth buying? Now G-Sync is an NVIDIA exclusive technology and in a sentence it's a variable refresh rate technology that reduces stutter and eliminates tearing from your games. Now, in order to understand what G-Sync actually is, we need to look at the problems that we get with a normal monitor. Now, monitors are at a fixed refresh rate. You can't really change them. Some people can slightly overclock them, but they don't change. Your GPU is constantly having to send the constant signal to your monitor, and then that is what your monitor will display. Most people will have a 60 hertz monitor, which is basically the same as 60 FPS. Both things mean images per second. Now, 30 FPS, 85, 100, 120, 144 hertz monitors exist, but for this example, we'll basically just look at 60 hertz monitors and how they actually display games. So when you're playing your PC games, you've probably noticed a V-Sync setting, and this can either be on or off. Now, if your V-Sync is off and you might have loaded up a game and you might have seen that your FPS is running into the 1500s in menus, now this is because your GPU is completely unrestricted, it's allowed to go off and do whatever it likes to do, it's like a dog off a lead. It renders as many frames per second as it can. Now the problem is that your monitor is not like this, it's running at a fixed refresh rate, it's not variable, so you get this thing called tearing. Now if your frame rate is higher or lower, I used to think it was just if it was higher, but no, that is completely incorrect. It's all about timings. So if your FPS is lower or higher than your refresh rate, you get this problem called tearing. Now, essentially, put really simply, this actually is because the timings are off. So if you imagine that a monitor, when it draws an image, it pans across like this. That's what the P in progressive means. Progressively scans across like that, just like you're scrubbing a window or something like that. And that's how it generates an image. Now, if your GPU is exactly at the right hertz right refresh rate then it will do it no problem but the problem is if it's out of sync and your gpu is not displaying the same timings that your actual monitor can display what will happen is that you'll start panning an image like this and then it will get to here and then now your gpu is saying well i've got this frame ready and it's sending another frame so your monitor now starts displaying the next frame at the bottom bit of the image like that and that is where sometimes you see this tearing, where if you're playing a first-person shooter, is the most obvious example, and you look to the right, you'll kind of see that my head would be about here from the image down, but then in its normal place at the top of the image. That's just because your timings are out of sync and your monitor is displaying the next frame before it is actually ready to be shown. So this is a big problem, and this is how we get around it, we turn on V-Sync. Now what V-Sync, or Vertical Sync, actually does is it makes sure that your graphics card is rendering frames in the correct timings. So brilliant, we've got rid of the problem completely, timings are great, the timings match, so we're not going to get any of this tearing. Yeah, wait a minute. Problem is, with this, we then get a problem called stutter. And you've no doubt seen this before if you turn V-Sync on. The problem is that as long as you're generating over the amount of um, refresh rate hertz that your monitor will display, so if you've got a 60 hertz monitor, as long as you're constantly rendering over 60 FPS, brilliant, you're not going to run into any problems. Some people say there's a little bit additional lag in the system, but you're, you're probably not really going to actually notice much of a difference. The problem is if your minimum frame rate drops below that of your monitor, now you're going to get this thing called stutter. Now the stutter happens because effectively your monitor and your GPU are going to be in sync, but if they become out of sync because your GPU can't actually keep up with what it needs to be providing, then it effectively halves the frame rate because you're missing that frame that your GPU just can't send. So if you're running 60 FPS and it drops down to 59, then essentially for a little bit of time you're going to be getting 30 frames a second, which if you're trying to look around then you oh, it's just horrible to think about. Um, you get this stutter that you've no doubt seen before. So this is a big problem, and at the moment there's not really been much of a fix until NVIDIA came along with G-Sync. So what G-Sync basically is, is it's like the next evolution of vertical sync. And the way it does this is that while it still synchronizes your monitor and your GPU's refresh rate, it actually allows your monitor's refresh rate to change. So this means that rather than just having to have your GPU rendering 60 frames a second, even if it can't, 
It now means that both the GPU and the monitor are going to be rendering in tandem and that means if you've got 38 frames a second from your GPU then your monitor is only going to show 38 frames a second so the timings are always correct and you're not going to get any stutter and you're not going to get any tearing. Brilliant! This means that our problem has been completely solved and that means we can play our games in a really smooth manner. So while that's all very good in theory, does it actually work? Well, I've been testing it with the help of a 27 inch Philips monitor and all G-Sync monitors work in the same way. They've all got a G-Sync module and they all have to be hooked up via DisplayPort to an Nvidia graphics card. So the first thing to note is that you can now play games at around 40 frames a second and up very comfortably without having to worry about any of the problems that you've associated V-Sync with before. Now, one of the problems V-Sync has is tearing, and I have not seen a single tear since using G-Sync. That is absolutely amazing. Haven't had a problem with that. Brilliant. Now, the other thing it's meant to solve is stutter, and this is where I think there's a slight bit of confusion, at least I can only report from my experience. Now, it does, as far as I can tell, completely eliminate the stutter from where you would have V-Sync enabled, and it drops below your monitor's refresh rate. So if you went from 60 to 59, you wouldn't get any stutter anymore. That is absolutely, as it says, that's brilliant. But some people seem to think that if you are running a game at 100 frames a second and it drops to 40, then you're not really going to notice that. And that's not really true. Um, I was playing a notorious example, actually, of bad coding. And if any of you have played Mass Effect 2 on a high refresh rate monitor, you'll know that it doesn't actually do this natively. You need to go into the config files and you need to change it. So obviously that is a shame that that was like that. And you get some issues when you do this. You get solid drops from about 144 frames a second to literally about 43. And yes, this is noticeable. You still get some stutter and it also doesn't help that it seems like the uh, mouse control was actually tied to the refresh rate in this game, which is stupid. Um, so the point here is that it can't solve every problem that you're going to get when it comes to stutter. If you've got a game that's not as well coded as others and you can get drops of up to 30 frames a second then you know you will notice it. You won't get that horrible stutter but if you go back to VSync when you notice that there's a stutter because it drops from 60 to 30 if you've got a big drop you are still going to notice it. It's just if you've got a small drop that's when you're not going to notice it. At least that's my experience anyway. Now it's very important to note that when using G-Sync you're not going to get the same level of smoothness that you would get at say 60 frames a second if you're playing a game at 33. Uh, but going a little bit up the scale, I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 4 recently and I've been playing that hovering around the 90 to 115 depending on whether there's any explosions or stuff and that is literally the best experience I've had with Battlefield, ex Battlefield 4. Everything's butter smooth, if there are drops I don't notice it and it's just pretty incredible experience and it's definitely the best way that I've ever played Battlefield 4 and that is all down to G-Sync. So then, it works! Brilliant! G-Sync is the answer to our problems. If you want the smoothest gameplay experience then G-Sync is going to be able to do it but don't expect miracles. It's not going to be able to change games that don't work as well as they should and it's not going to be able to disguise up to 30 frames a second drops because that's the sort of problem that we had with V-Sync in the first place. So as long as you're realistic with your expectations, I think it's going to fulfill every single one of them. You're, it completely eliminates tearing and it reduces stutter. I think that's the best way of saying it. Of course, if you're an AMD user, you've got the FreeSync option for your monitors that are coming out very soon. Um, the problem with G-Sync at the moment is that this G-Sync module adds cost. And from what I could tell, it adds about £100 in the UK to the cost. Obviously it depends on the monitor, so don't obviously quote me on that. Completely depends on the monitor. But if you look at some of the monitors that do have G-Sync and some of the more or less identical ones that don't, it is quite a significant price difference. So is it actually worth it? Well, I think if you obviously have the money to spend on a decent gaming monitor, and that is what it's for, gaming, then I would say absolutely it definitely is worth the additional cost because it is the best experience that you can get at the moment when playing your PC games. However, as soon as you start to do a monitor for multiple things, so if you're someone that does a bit of photography on the side, does a bit of video editing, or doesn't actually play games that often, you're investing a lot of money in a technology that is solely for one purpose and that is when maybe it's not quite uh, worth the cost. 
But one thing's for sure, I am going to be very sad as soon as I have to give up G-Sync and go back and use a monitor that doesn't have it. So if you can, obviously go and see it for yourself because it's not something you can show on camera. But having said that, it is definitely uh, worth the cost, in my opinion, as long as it is for gaming. So that is G-Sync explained, what it does, how it works, and whether it's worth it. Obviously, this is just my opinion as always. Let me know what you think. Do you have G-Sync? Do you have FreeSync? Do you think it's worth it? Can you put up with stutter and tearing? I don't know. Let me know in the comments section below. If you thought this video was useful, give it a like, obviously. And if you didn't like it, have a guess, give it a dislike. Uh, share this video if you know that if there's someone out there that wants to know what G-Sync is, if they've heard it as well and want to know what it actually is, then obviously share this video uh, and that way they can learn about G-Sync too. Um, if you've seen on the PC Centric Facebook page, this channel's kicking it into high gear now. Um, every Sunday, every Wednesday, videos will come out without fail. Disclaimer, there might sometimes not be a video. Uh, in extreme cases, and you'd get a notice of this on my Twitter page and on my Facebook page. But the point is, videos are going to be coming, are going to be coming every Sunday and every Wednesday, so do look out for them. Uh, that way you can see them first. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope it's been useful, and I'll see you in the next one.